Hello and welcome to On The Rocks, a BRTFC Supporters Club podcast where we discuss all things BRTFC and I'm your host, Liam Goodley. This broadcast and our club are sponsored by Reynolds Furniture. Visit their store on 27 to 31 High Street, Bognor Ridges today, or log on to their website, www.reynoldsfurniture.co.uk for more details on a fantastic local service they can offer you. This one is a special episode. He returned to the Rocks at the back end of last season from a spell at Eastbourne Borough and was a main feature in our National League season uh, days in the 2017-18 season. Welcome to the one and only Christian Campbell. Thanks for joining me, Christian. How are you? Yeah, hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, yeah, just looking forward to doing this podcast with you and uh, yeah, talking about my, my past that woman has Yeah, that's good. No, uh, thanks for joining me. Obviously, um, I know uh, Kenneth Wood has helped me out to, to get, in, get in touch with you, so thanks to Ken for that. Obviously, Christian, yeah. it's hard times at the moment across the world right now with the pandemic, and it's important to stay safe, of course. How are you yeah, coping definitely. without the football at the moment? Uh, to be fair, um, I've kind of used this time as a reset to kind of uh, just basically do all the things that I've needed to. Um, without football, yeah, at the start it was quite hard, but as it's gone on, um, I'm just trying to use it to get back into training, stretching, um, to make sure that when football does start back, that, that yeah, I'm fully fit and fully ready for the next season. Yes, I mean, it's... So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely fit, missing it. It's important, it's important to stay fit at this time, even even when you're at home or, um, you know, you're not. I believe you're not even in training at the moment. Is that correct? Yeah, right now, none of us are training. Um, I saw yesterday that it's uh, been extended by another three weeks, so I don't know what that means for when football comes back or when training comes back. Uh, or how it's all going to work with yeah once the social distancing and lockdown ends. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with, for next season either, because obviously there's a lot of discussions at the moment as to when we're likely to do <laughs> go back to normal, you know, across the world and in all forms of work and and sport as well. Uh, let's talk yeah. about your early career, Christian. Interest, interestingly, I, th- I think fans wouldn't have known at the age of 15 is when you sort of started football, but you're originally a goalkeeper. Could you tell us more about yeah. growing up being a goalkeeper and why you originally played in that position? Uh, well, basically, started with my school team. Um, I just had a big love for playing in goal. Um, basically, I was just enjoyed diving around. Um, and then, yeah, one of my teachers gave me a leaflet for Bromley FC cars when I was leaving year 11. Yeah. And um, I went to the cars as a goalkeeper. And, um, yeah, Bromley FC said that they wanted me. And then, um, yeah, I yeah, just became a goalkeeper. And yeah, just enjoyed it. Yeah, have you have you done the gloves for rocks before? I can't, couldn't remember if you had to when when one of our either our goalkeeper got injured or not. I'm not sure if you had. To. No, no, I haven't. But I tried to. Um, I think it's, I can't remember who it was against, but Darlington got injured, and um, I think it was going to be between me and Gary Charman who won goals, and then um, in the end, Gary Charman ended up going goal for the last. I think it was the last half hour of the game. That's right, and he did but, well. Uh, I remember. Yeah, yeah, he made a couple of saves as well, so yeah, it was the right decision to put Gary John in goal. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you'd had you you'd done the gloves before, but I knew you were in discussion. You were in that season when we one of those. I think Gary Charman's gone in goal. James Crane, Dan Beck have all had to go in the in the goalpost unexpectedly yeah. in the past. Um, are, are, if if you were asked to, if you had to, obviously we normally only have one goalkeeper. Uh, would you would you go yeah. in goal for us? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> really, I, I still, I still kind of miss it, but yeah, I definitely would. Yeah, I, I definitely, definitely uh, think about it. Oh, that's great. I mean, you changed to left back position after joining the Bromley Academy after just two to three months. Uh, why yeah. did that change happen, and was it suggested to you, or did you decide to do that? Uh, I think it was in training. Um, we were doing a keep on drill. Um, where basically just people make a certain number of passes and um, I think one of the coaches was watching and uh, after he spoke to me and said um, he definitely believes that I could play out of um, so I thought about it for a couple of weeks and then um, I just said to him listen I want to come out of uh, come out of goal and play out of so um, I had to talk with the academy manager Murray Jones um, and the assistant Steve Baker and um, yes yeah, they uh, luckily agreed to let me play outfield. They asked me what position I wanted to play. And I said, yeah, I wanted to play left back. So that's how I got converted from goalkeeper to left back. Do you prefer playing in the left back position compared to the goal in goal? 
Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more to do. Um, there were a couple of games when I was younger where I'm playing in goal, and I think it was one game I didn't have anything to do all game. So, yeah. I think it's one, more. Of the, one of the positions that's not really, uh, I mean, it's not, it's easily forgotten the fullback position because there's a lot of things that a fullback needs to do, isn't there? And I don't think yeah. a lot of fans appreciate how much that, that fullback position has to do, <laughs> defending and attacking. Yeah. yeah, especially modern day fullbacks. I think it's evolved over the over the years from fullbacks that kind of just fit in, whereas now fullbacks kind of second wingers. So. It's almost like wing back, isn't it? Way back, yeah. it's usually a, a wing back position. Almost, you're sort of having to yeah. search forward as well as defend, <laughs> which sometimes yeah, can't can't go all, always to plan. But um, but fullbacks obviously uh, uh, primarily defending, but oftentimes they're having to uh, get on get the break team on the attack. Yeah, definitely. Um, for most managers that I've played under, they definitely want you to defend first. But uh, as soon as you're done with defending, they want you getting up supporting. Uh, Okay. Yeah, so between 2012 and 2014, you were dual registered with Holmesdale FC in the Combined Counties League. How was the football experience yeah. there compared to the Bromley Academy? Uh, it was different because it was men's football. Um, I think I was in my last year at Bromley FC and I wanted to get more into men's football. Yeah. Um, so luckily I knew um, a couple of guys from, from the under 18 um, you know, I've worked there for a couple of years and um, yeah, they became managers at Huntsville City. I was in the problem with the game and I said, yeah, definitely. And yeah, that was kind of my first step. So it was men's into, football? Uh, yeah, it was men's football. It was a lot, phys- a lot more physical. Um, it was, to be fair, looking back, it was a good place to start because it wasn't too high of a level. Um, allowed me to find my bearings, get confident and then yeah, I me to progress from there. Oh, that's great. You were also given a great chance when you went on trial to Aldershot Town in 2014. How did that trial go and were, what were the best things you learned from whilst you were there? Uh, it was a step into full-time, into full-time football. Um, it was actually the chairman's brother that I knew at uh, Homs FC who was watching. And um, he said, yeah, you want to take me on trial to, uh, to Aldershot Town. I was there for a few months. Um, and yeah, I learned. Yeah, I learned quite a few things. It was nice just to see how a full time environment is, um, training every day. I know I experienced that at Bromley FC, but I've got to experience it away from Bromley FC where I didn't know anyone and I've just come sort of straight in and started training with uh, uh with the first team. Um, so yeah, it was quite a good experience. Yeah, Aldershot Town I remember they had to obviously work their way up through the leagues again after dropping out of existence for a time. And I believe they had to climb up through the leagues and I remember them having a massive following of fans. Um, they they are obviously a very big club now. They're obviously yeah. in the higher echelons of football, so that, that must have been a great experience for you. Yeah, it was a very good experience. Um, um, I think I was there for about, I think it was two and a half, yeah, two and a half months. Um, but in the end, I think it was Andy Scott at the time. He was saying he did want to sign me, but unfortunately, due to financial situations, they weren't able to. So um, mm. kept coming into training and. Yeah, unfortunately, Andy Scott got let go of from his position uh, and it kind of left me in no man's land. Um, so, yeah, I just ended up obviously not being able to keep coming in with all shut down. So, um, I ended up going back to home, Chelsea. So, so, following this, you were signed by East Grinstead Town until the, um, that was until the end of the season for a few months. What were your memories from this time? Uh, it was pretty much the managers from Hunter FC ended up going to East Grinstead Town and um, they said that they wanted me to come along with them. Um, so I ended up signing there, I think it was halfway through the season. Um, so I ended up signing at East Grinstead Town and then it was another step up. So um, in my head, it was a league higher and I felt like I was ready for another challenge. Um, so yeah, I ended up signing with East Grinstead Town. That often yeah. happens, doesn't it, at the lower level? If a, if a manager moves, they often take the players with them and they're so used to working with those set of players that they often like to take those players with them to other teams. Do you find that happens quite yeah. a lot? Yeah, I've seen it quite, happen quite a bit um, uh, recently. It's sort of with Maston and King Stanion. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it does, it does happen quite a bit um, with managers wanting to work with the same players at a new club. 
yeah, definitely. During the 2015 and 26 season, you were really unfortunate playing for Dulwich Hamlet, picking up an injury after just four games. You you ended up being out of the game for four months. What was the injury? And tell us how frustrating that was for you. Yeah, when I joined Dulwich, I felt I was enjoying training. I felt good. Um, and when we had a game against Billericay, I came on as a sub um, left wing and I literally just went up for a header. And as I landed, I just thought, Maybe the play of me went into my leg. But then I managed to finish the last 15 minutes of the game. And then at the end, we were doing our stretches at the end. And um, my legs just started to stiffen up. And I was just like, oh, starting to feel a bit more tight. And then by the time we finished that stretch and I started walking in, by the time I got to the tunnel, my leg had gone completely stiff. And I couldn't bend it from my knee. Um, and I was like, oh, what's wrong? Um, so I had a few x-rays, um, had a few scans, and then they said I've torn my quad, um, and it's a great two. Um, so yeah, they said it's going to take about three months to recover. Uh, ended up taking four months, but it just meant I couldn't do anything. I literally couldn't even go upstairs. Um, I literally just had to hop upstairs all the time. So yeah, it was, um, it was a blow, because uh, when I was out of action, it's the longest injury I've had. Yeah, no, it must have been. Obviously, it affects you away from football as well as... I don't think people appreciate that it affects you away from football as well as that it within football. Yeah. It's your whole life, not just uh, not just on the pitch. Yeah, it affects me with work as well. Um, at the time, I was working at Sky, um, Sky Health and Fitness. So um, I was a health and lifestyle advisor, so that meant that I couldn't take classes. Um, I couldn't do any sort of lower body exercises. Um, I struggle for the upper body exercises if I'm doing a class just because I obviously demonstrate. So yeah, it's like my work life quite a bit as well. Yeah, I know. But obviously when you returned to fitness, you played, you managed to get signed by my Merston after December that year. You yeah. got off to a great start there with two early goals in the first two matches before going on to win the Surrey Senior Cup with them. That must have been a really good feeling to end that season positively after such a big injury. Yeah, to be fair, it was good to... Um, to see that phone but after I joined West and I had a talk with Hayden Fred and I remember he told me with quite a lot of confidence um, he just said to me you need to be given the left back shirt you need to play consistently and he said you're going to get that here um, so I only went on longer but he really made me feel like one of his main players so um, yeah, I was very thankful to him for that and he was nice to finish the season and in the Surrey Senior Cup there yeah, you know, I I think a lot of people don't appreciate how big that is for for a team. Obviously, County Cup. Obviously, there might not be so much money in it involved with it, but when yeah. it, when it comes to it, the silverware for a team, it gives the, the team a real boost. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure many people would just look at it and think, oh, it's just the Surrey Senior Cup. But you know, when you're going through your career, especially if you're in the non you want to win as much as what you can. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Any trophy that you can win is quite important throughout yeah. your career. Like, in that either. Yeah, for the Sussex Senior Cup for us last year was a great achievement. Obviously, I hope it's been nearly well over 30 years since we last won it, so it was great to have that experience, obviously winning it. Um, looking yeah. back at your time at Merston, Christian, they they seem like a well-managed club. Obviously, obviously they changed hands now, but they seem like a, a you know a well-run club. What were your experiences like playing there? Whilst you, obviously you mentioned Hayden Bird there, uh, he seems like a, a key manager in the, at this level. Yeah, when I joined, he was definitely a manager that knew how he wanted to play. He didn't want to just play in the typical non-league way, which was just slanting the ball forward. Um, if you look at our team, I think I was one of the tallest ones. Um, there was only two players corner, so we weren't physically that big, so his main aim was to play the ball along the floor. Um, so he was definitely a guy that loved to pass the ball, um, loved to move it. And I think that was, yeah, that was his main style. Um, didn't really want to go along. No, that's um, that's obviously what you like to see. Obviously, Bogner tried to do the same. Uh, you would end up staying at Merston for the 2016-17 season. Within a year, you were representing Merston in the FA Cup first round proper against Oxford. The game finished obviously five 0 to Oxford. But what were you? What you were awarded the Man of the Match award, and what were what an experience this must have been? Yeah. To be fair, back in memory, I'll never forget. Um, I remember after the game, I was, I was talking to uh, Mark O'Coy and he said, oh yeah, you got given Man of the Match award and I just stared at him and I was like, nah, you're just messing with me. Um, so then I got showered and then after we were talking about him, he was like, no, you actually got Man of the Match. Um, then I asked a couple of other players and I was like, he's being serious and then 
they turned out like they actually gave me under the match, um, which to me for a game like that I thought was huge. Um, and then yeah, it's just a it's just a memory I'll never forget. No, that's that's what FA Cup is all about, isn't it? It's memories, and uh, you know, uh, I think it's it's unfortunate for us because we've not really made it to that uh, that stage yet for Bogner for a long time, and I think it's, yeah. that's that's the next sort of step for us uh, is getting a big, you know. TV deal, <laughs> getting that to that next, to that first round proper or second round proper to really get on TV yeah. and go to that next level. But during that, obviously after that game, goalkeeping legend David James had some nice words for you after that game in the newspaper. Do you remember what he said at the time? Yeah, I finished at the gym. I was literally, as I was walking out, um, I just literally got my stuff out of the locker, uh, put my bag on there, look on my phone, and I had a notification on Twitter uh, saying David James would. Uh, I can't remember the title, but it basically just said David James had said something about me. Um, and it was basically a whole article about um, how he was quizzing people at the club about my contract situation, trying to find out more details about, um, yeah, how long I've been contracted to. So, just that whole article is quite unreal to, to read at the time. Cause, yeah, it was just unexpected. Um, and then there was talk of crowds at different clubs. Um, yeah, it was it was a surreal moment when I yeah, when I picked up my phone and read it. So that obviously led to you getting in the shop window again for clubs being interested to sign you. Obviously, eventually Bromley would sign you again in 2017. How did you feel at yeah. the time after building great momentum with Merston? Yeah, I did feel like I wanted another challenge. Um, I felt like I wanted to play another league high. I know that Bromley was ceiling high, but I still wanted to progress and get back into full time football. Um, and obviously my academy manager uh, at the time was Neil Smith and he was now the first team manager at, uh, at Bromley FC so I thought yeah, it would be good to um, get that work in London so it's kind of a no-brainer to go back Yeah, no, I mean um, unfortunately when you went back there you didn't quite feature as much as you'd liked obviously you did before with Merston um, but this must have been a bit of a frustrating time for you. Obviously, you'd gone back there and you wanted to, some game time and you didn't get as much as you expected. Could you speak about that sort of time for us? Yeah. Um, I feel like I started well, but I never really got to... I never really got to show what it was I was really about. I never felt like I was that... that player that showed what I was really all about. Um, it's good being back in the full-time football training every day. Um, gym straight after had all the facilities that were open to me, so that was pretty positive. But on the football side, I never really feel like it got going how I wanted to, and um, obviously that led to me um, going on loan to to Bognor. But, yeah, so you've yeah. got the option obviously to go out on loan from Bromley. So it was either Welling United, Leatherhead, or, or ourselves Bognor. <laughs> You chose the rocks, of course, but this was the furthest away from where you were based. So, why did you come to the choice of selecting Bognor instead of those other clubs? Uh, I remember actually having a talk with Neil Smith, and uh, he gave me the three options. He said it's either Leatherhead, um, Welling, or Bognor that would be interested in having me alone. And I said straight away Bognor. Um, I actually played against Bognor. Uh, I think it was when I was at Dulwich, and um, I remember the atmosphere, the fans. I was like, yeah, definitely, 100%. I want to go to Um I knew it was the furthest spot for the football, for the football side of it. That's, uh, that's why I made my decision. Yeah, where, where were you based? Are you still based where you were then? Or are you still based quite far away from us? No, no, no. I've actually uh, moved down. So I live uh, towards Cape Town. But at the time, I did live in South London. Wow. Okay, um, yeah, so it's quite a trek for you each game. Yeah, just under two hours. <laughs> so was away game yeah. easier for you to make, obviously being that far away from Bognor? Yeah, I remember joking about it with a few people. So when I had a away game, I'd do that. Yeah, we've got a home game, it's a bit close enough. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a lot closer when it came to the home games. Because then yeah, you no. base close to London yeah. and, uh, in Conference South. Yeah. So you're with us for that side. That was the 2017-18 season, wasn't it? Yeah. Tell us what you you liked most about the club at the time. Uh, you know, as soon as I came, uh, I just talked with Darren Kilpatrick and again, he filled me with confidence. Um, he just had a talk with me and said, obviously, 
knows I haven't been playing that fondly. Um, but he's like, don't worry, we're going to get the best out of you. Um, and to be fair, he actually did. <laughs> so um, I would like to think it showed in my performances. But yeah, as soon as I came off at home, I felt comfortable. And I'd like to think of the my performances reflected that on the pitch. I felt like Dabba, Dabba Kilpatrick got a, you know got the best out of the players. Do you think he was a really good coach in the on the training pitch? Yeah, to be fair, I thought he was uh, quite a good coach. Um, to be fair, one of the best that I've worked under, um, especially when it comes to putting people's confidence. He knows how to get his point across to other players without, you know, with just talking, um, giving small bits of advice every now and again, yeah. um, especially during games as well. No, it seems like he, he was a good motivator as well as uh, tactically very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you, you obviously you stayed with us that season. Doug Tuck was a close teammate of yours whilst with us at the time and still remains so. <laughs> you bonded over eight yeah. from Paul, is that right? Yeah, so we sat next to each other in, uh, in the changing room and uh, yeah, I don't know how it started, but I think he fancy me was like, yeah, eight ball pool. And then uh, yeah, every game afterwards, we just played eight ball pool before, um, before any game. And, uh, is this in the, the in the bar or is this online or? No, no, no. It's literally um, on our phones. It's an uh, app, which is eight ball pool. Oh right. So, um, yeah, you could just play other players, and um, I always ended up playing him. Uh, I think he's on ahead right now. So, so you got to you got to get your own back. back. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> when you were with us that year, do you remember your goal at Dartford? I remember it fondly. You drew us level one all when we weren't behind early on. We went on to lose that game, obviously three one, of course. But what were your memories of that day? You scored a, a brilliant solo goal. Yeah, I think it was my second. I think it was my second game for Bournemouth. But um, yeah, as soon as I scored, it was like a big relief. Um, and some frustrations with the seasons not playing. Um, so yeah, after scoring that, I just felt like a big relief. Yeah, I um, mean um, that was a that was a great day. Obviously, the the atmosphere was good there, and they were on the up. Obviously, Dartford. Um, yeah, that was a it must have been a great occasion for you to to get off to a good start. Obviously, scoring a goal. Was, you know, I think you were full back position that day as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a lopsided formation, so it was um, no winger in front of me. So that allowed me to obviously get forward and uh, yeah, be more attacking. So it was kind of more of a wing back role. Yeah. Rocks would obviously get relegated that season, but you went back to Bromley only to be told that your contract would not be renewed the following season. But Jamie Howes, yeah. Eastbourne, were interested. How did your time at Eastbourne Borough all start? Uh, apparently, uh, I suppose, uh, Jim Allen, he said to me, he was watching whilst I was at Bogna, and, um, I heard from a couple of people that he was interested, so I had to talk with him, ended up coming down to Eastbourne Bar, and, uh, had to talk with Jamie, and then later on that pre-season, I ended up signing. Was he a good manager? Did he was a good manager to work under? It's unfortunate he's no longer there, of course, but, um, is, is he, uh, a man that you work hard for on the pitch? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think we got that um, feeling when he was with us, obviously, the last time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. as soon as I came to the uh, club the first time I came there during pre-season, uh, he just welcomed me, we had a talk. He was very open and welcoming. welcoming. Um, so yeah, he was, he was one of the managers that I really wanted to work hard for. Um, yeah, I feel like he got the best out of me as well. Um, my management-wise as well, he's quite good. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. I mean, you enjoyed a busy and fruitful season under Mark McGee there in 2018 before signing a, a, a deal for a two-year extension with Lee Bradbury when he became manager. Obviously, unfortunately, things didn't work out there after the first year and you decided to return to Bognor. How did you know that Bognor were, wanted to sign you? Uh, actually, I thought with Jack Pierce, um, we were just having a talk and then we spoke about um, the possibility of me coming back. And, um, yeah, Jack said, uh, he's keen to bring me back, so I ended up re-signing uh, just before the lose game. But it was too late to actually play for the lose game, so I uh, ended up watching and then playing the playing the final game. So I believe, um, obviously, we announced it. I think it was announced on Rock's radio that you were there at the game. Um, you were at the game, obviously, warming up with the lads, but you weren't allowed to actually feature on the side just yet because of the yeah. out paperwork. What were your what were your general thoughts on your return to the Green Army this past season? Yeah, I could see um they uh that Bogner obviously still stick to um their ways of playing football. Um I think that might be played some great football. Um and then obviously 
we managed to get a win as well. But um, yeah, there's still a few familiar faces like Doug, Keaton, um, Amadou. So yeah, there's still a few familiar faces. Yeah, the players, from, uh, I like the players. Yeah, they've, they've done well, haven't they? They've, they look like they're gelling all together now. And um, with a few additions, I think, you know, this team really could push on for next year. But what were your thoughts on the, the last game of the season away to Horsham? You featured in that one at left back. I thought we played well. What was your view as a player? Yeah, um, it was two teams that I loved to play football. Um, I could see from the start, Horsham were, weren't going to lump it long. So um, it's two footballing teams. And um, yeah, I think it was a good result. We managed to get a 2 0 win. Um, a great atmosphere from uh, both fans. We brought down quite a few fans as well. And, um, so it's nice when it's uh, a win against your local neighbours. Yeah, I, I thought um, we played really well, and I think Horsham didn't really get a you know a look in really that day because I think we just played so well. We held the ball well. We had the two strikes that you know put them put them away really, and any time they had a chance. They were very wasteful in front of goal, and and that proved proved the you know that we were. Is it frustrating for you that the the, the season ended so as it did? Yeah, um, it's frustrating. But when you look at the grand scheme of things of why it's ended, then I'm not sure anyone can have really any complaints. I think um, everyone's health and fitness kind of comes first right now. And as much as I would love for the football season to be going on. Um, unfortunate circumstances of where uh, well, I can't continue. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it uh, all starting back up in the next couple of weeks and hopefully getting back to training within hopefully next month and a bit, two months. Hopefully, all being well. Uh, yeah, that's hopeful thinking. Yeah, it's now time for the quick fire Rocks players round. Now, I've switched this up around a little bit for, for players. Instead of the direct yeah. choices between players like we do with the fans, I want you to just give me the name of the first Bogner player that springs to mind, your choices at the ready. Obviously, the Bogner players I'm, I'm looking for, Christian. But if you can't give me a yeah. Bogner player name, just give me somebody that you played with uh, in, in the team. So are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Best dressed? I'm going to back myself. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Gamble for that one. <laughs> Most musical? Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm going to say Ollie Pierce. Ollie Pierce. Yeah. Most serious. Crane. James Crane. Yeah. Biggest appetite. Uh, I'm going to go Keaton Wood. Best athlete. Jimmy Newt. Most scruffy. Uh, Harvey, Harvey White. <laughs> Best friend on the, in the field. In the... Uh, I'm going to say Doug. Doug Clark. Most reliable. Mm, and say Doug Clark again. Most skillful. Oh, uh, that's a tough one. Between. I'm going to go for Jimmy Newt. Best crosser? Best crosser? Uh, Ollie Pierce. Best passer? Doug again. <laughs> Best hairdo? <laughs> Ooh. I'm going to say Harvey White. <laughs> Best beard. Eating with. Best attitude. Oh, there's quite a few. Uh, I'm going to say, from what I've seen so far, from here. Yeah. Biggest bookworm. Oh, I don't think there's many of them. Uh, I have no idea. I've, I'm going to say Eating. <laughs> yeah. Most nervous. Before a game. Oh, that's hard to tell. No one really shows any nerves. I think they're all yeah, poker based. They, they would like to show that they're not 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 they're not nervous when they maybe are. Yeah, everyone looks very confident and considering we're a passing team. Yeah, I don't think I can nominate anyone for that. I think everyone everyone's quite confident. So these next ones are sort of quite general. Best striker. Yeah. I'll leave this. 
best midfielder? Bug. Best defender? And uh, Best goalkeeper? Oh, the stuff. Uh, I'm going to give it to you because I played with him longer. Dan Lincoln. Best coach? Dabba. Dabba Kilpatrick? Yeah. Yeah. And best football mind is the last one. Oh, best football mind. Uh, I'm going to give that to, I think, Ben Swallow. Ben Swallow. Yeah. Looking ahead, Christian, when do you think fans are likely to get back to seeing football again and you playing? I believe training is not even happening, obviously, we said before. Uh, is that true? Yeah. Obviously, there's no, no training going, going ahead at the moment. And when do you envisage we're going to be back playing again? Have you heard anything? Uh, no, I just know that it's been extended. I'm, I'm hopeful to, that it would be maybe a month and a half that we can get back to training. Um, I'm only there to speculation that um, the Chinese Super League is apparently going to start and apparently will be I think two, three months behind them. So I'm hearing it's going to start at the end of this month or next month. And so ideally, I would like it to be another two months until we get back to training um, mm-hmm. or a month and a half. But, um, yeah, that's just me being hopeful. Yeah, so it's, most, it's, it's best to be safe, completely, uh, obviously, clear. Obviously, the whole situation needs to be 100% positive that the, they can go ahead and go think, uh, get back to normal. Obviously, away from football, you have built yourself a career. I see you have a keen interest in sports away from the football. Can you tell fans yeah, what definitely. you've done uh, away, from, away from football for work? I've, um, I've been a fitness instructor, then I've got my level three in um, personal training to allow me to be a health and lifestyle advisor. And then um, after I left on there, I went into teaching and um, yeah, it's kind of something I, I've enjoyed more than what I thought I would have. Um, that's a bit hesitant going into teaching, but yeah, um, teaching, being a key teacher is um, my new uh, career path. So is it football as a focus or is it it covers all sports, doesn't it, being a PE teacher? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I cover quite a range of things. So it's um, football, cricket, hockey, tennis, um, rugby. Um, so yeah, it's a big variety of uh, sports that I have to cover. I always remember my PE teachers from school. They're, they're real, obviously, inspirations and hopefully... You'll find that as you as you as you in your in your career you go on to do that. I believe James Crane was a is a, a PE teacher. Is that correct? Yeah, um, I only found that out recently. Uh, I think it was our last training session. He said um, he's a PE teacher as well. Um, in yeah, yeah, interesting. You've got the scare ideas. Hand. Yeah, I think it goes hand in hand being um, being in sports and uh, and also playing football as well. Yeah, um, yeah so I think it works well together. So looking ahead to next season, uh, Christian, can you see yourself back in the Rocks camp next season whenever that starts? Yeah, I definitely can see myself there. But um, just have to wait and see um, what happens with, uh, with football on the whole. Yeah. Um, you can never show what's going to happen with um, football clubs right now. So, um, yeah, but yeah, definitely yeah, I can see um, myself in that. Yeah, there's uh, obviously they usually do trials beforehand. I don't know if you would need to go to the trials. And you, I think it's usually to find any new talent that's in the area. But would you likely go to that, or would that be? Uh, would you just talk privately with the club to arrange um, signing on for next season? Yeah, I think I'd talk privately. Um, yeah, I think that that would be the route. I've always wondered whether you know current players have had to go to trial, even though. They, you know, they were signed with us the previous season and played at that level the previous season. They've proven themselves. Why should they need to go to a trial before pre-season, given that they've already yeah. played? So uh, I always thought that maybe the other the players that are on contract or uh, agreed to play uh, would have a, a private discussions with the club uh, in order to play for the following season. Yeah, from what I know, yeah, they usually don't actually trial, but they will have just a conversation with obviously the players that are contracted or that I've paid from them in the season before to say how do we want you to stay or they can look elsewhere um, so yeah I mean they may better run until you run after the bump of the car but um, yeah in my experience they uh, probably usually just have a talk with you instead 
Yeah. I know you recently become a, a father. How how proud of a dad are you right now, and how is that going? Yeah, it's a weird feeling. Um, it was it was very exciting, but now I'm just seeing my daughter she pick up new things. Um, she's recently well, I help her. She started walking. She's trying to talk. Um, not proper words, but yeah, it's just it's weird and exciting watching her pick up new things every day. Um, yeah. It's a very exciting feeling, and I'm, I'm loving being with that. I'm sure your your uh, your youngster will be looking up to you as a footballer. Do you do you ever think that she'll become a, a footballer at some point? And could you name a role role model of yours in the football world growing up yourself? Uh, for me, my role model, because I'm a big Man United fan, my role role models were basically Rio Ferdinand, Wayne Rooney, and Ronaldo. Those were my three. Yeah, three that looks looks up to. Um, but yeah, for my daughter, I, I wouldn't be fussed if she did or didn't get into football. But I think she'll definitely pick it up, seeing as she's around me, and I'm obviously quite a big football fan. Yeah, um, yeah but I, I, I wouldn't be fussed if she uh, didn't get into football. No, it's, it's it's up to her, isn't it? Obviously, what whatever she wants to do, obviously. Um, obviously, to end this interview at this time, Christian, what would you like to say to Rox fans at this time? Any further comments you'd like to make at the end? Yeah, I just hope everyone's staying safe. Um, I know everyone's missing being at Nywood Lane, um, watching the boys, but yeah, hopefully everything's back soon and hopefully we can, uh, we can see all of you down at Nywood Lane. Yeah, hopefully we'll see you again, obviously, uh, as in games to come, Christian, and obviously. Uh, I really appreciate you spending the time to tell fans about your career today. Hopefully this team will include you next season as things turn uh, return to normality. Thank you for your continued yeah, efforts definitely. on the pitch and representing the Green, Mark, Green Army. If you'd like, it, it would be great to catch up sometime to, to see how things are going in your career, maybe a Q&A from fans or something. How would you feel about that? Yeah, that's, that's not a problem. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to do that. So, yeah. No, that's yeah, great. No, I'll be more than happy to Brilliant. That's great, Christian. Obviously, thanks a lot for joining me today. I must add a special thanks again to Kenneth Wood for helping me to organise this interview. Thanks, mate. Again, a big thanks to Rocks fullback Christian Campbell for being my guest today and getting the chance to chat with him. It was great fun. And I appreciate him taking the time. If you would like to get your say in an upcoming episode of On The Rocks, then please contact me on Twitter at Liam Goodley or see me uh, during game days whenever they arrive. If your business would like to sponsor our podcast, then please contact David Robertson to take you through all the options. Get your company mentioned on the air with us every episode. This has been an On The Rocks podcast production brought to you by the BRTFC Supporters Club. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Up the rocks.